But you can wait. Do you want to turn on the light behind you? Yep. Maybe. All right, guys. Hey, how are you doing? We are back again, uh, just as normal. Uh, we are here for the live uh, show. Uh, we'll be joining me momentarily. Maybe. Uh, if I can put, oh, we got light even. Oh, that's good. That's the upgrade we did. We, you want to know how we spend all this money that we get budgeted for upgrades? Uh, I spend it on cruises, to be honest with you guys. That, 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 that's the truth. I spend it on cruises, and then uh, we're stuck without lighting. So we, Rob managed to get wrestle away some of my uh, uh, carnival cruise budgeting, so we now have lights and mics. So. All right. We got one person. That's good. Good, good, good. That, I would say... And William Francis is watching. Oh, it's me. You're the you're the first I must be oh yeah. You're the you're the only follower? The only <laughs> follower. Is this like our whatnot? <laughs> this is like <clears throat> this is like whatnot again. For sure. Nobody's watching. Well we get two people on there. You yep. got one phone on, I got the other phone on. Yep. Yeah. And and then we don't buy from each other because we don't <laughs> want to pay the shipping. <laughs> yeah. So that's true. Well um I'm sure a few people are gonna watch this on like later, yeah, or whatever. So um, good. Oh, we're at two. So oh, uh, Bobby great. jumped on his phone. We have nope. at least yeah. one viewer. Uh, that's, that's probably nope. my wife. Uh, AC, <laughs> AC Snyder. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's we'll start with uh, my show. Your show. Yeah. This Saturday. You know what? I am going to your show. Right. Except for I'm going to need it to move to Baltimore. Yes. And have it done before noon when I get on uh, the Carnival Legend. Yeah. So if you can go ahead and relocate your show to Baltimore for Saturday, I will be at the show. Unless, if not, it will be another showless a show. A show. Yep, that's what they call it. That's what the Franklin County show is about. Yep. A villa show. Um, so my show, Southway American Legion, yep. is this Saturday, and yep. it's the third Saturday of every month, and I'm working on making it the third Saturday of every month in 2023 also. Don't think there's any major holidays, so we can kind of keep with that theme, easy to remember, right? Yep. And uh, there are a couple of people set up. Um, last time, I got through 15 people on a waiting list to add two people to the show. So I realized a lot of those names are stale. Yep. So if you didn't respond to me at all or anything, I just kind of crossed you off the list. Yep. And so we've got a couple new guys in there in the show, um, and you know some of the regulars will be back next month. But we got at least two new guys oh, one that guy, I don't believe have ever set up. One guy in particular was in the shop today, uh, and he let us look at uh, look at his dollar boxes and two dollar and three uh, three dollar uh, prices more boxes. Really good boxes. Um, in fact, if I wasn't going on a cruise, I probably would have spent a lot of money with him. But unfortunately, I'm going on a cruise, so he left here with boxes that are ready for you guys at the show Saturday. Yep, that's true. Um, so, uh, so my show Saturday again, a couple new people, and I believe Dale is actually back in the show. Wait, he had nothing. He had nothing else Wait, to do. Wait, Dale who? I know. I know it's, it's hard to believe. Uh, Dobbermeyer. Yo, Dobbermeyer? Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, he has not done a Southway show for uh, almost two years now. Yeah, I was going to say it's been yeah. a while. It's and been ironically, this is the weird thing. Technically, if you go back to about six years ago, me and Dale, well, probably been eight years ago, me and Dale actually started this show on the east side at the, what was it? Holiday Inn? Yeah. Holiday Inn. No, I don't know if that was Holiday Inn. Days Inn. Days Inn. Days Inn. And then Rob took it over, and then Rob moved it there. So <laughs> this is like one of the, uh, it's like, you know, like a contender coming back in yeah, the picture. He's an OG. He's an OG. He's an OG, and he's back there. Um, and again, he knows how it works. It, it's weird. He'll, he'll be there this month if you haven't seen him for a while. Yeah. He'll be there this month, but then regulars that have been doing it, you know, yeah. kind of replace him. The other thing I wanted to mention. Now, he does get a lot of people looking at yeah. nickel cards, dime cards, nickel cards, yeah. 50 cent cards, stuff like that. 
if you're looking to bulk up on rookies and stuff like that, he has normally has very good build and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention before we start talking about the big news, supposed news, uh, with uh, Panini and Fanatics, um, is a YouTube channel. So believe it or not, we do have a YouTube channel, and it's under just Game Time Sports Collectibles. Wait, we do? Yeah, we do. And actually, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 videos. Uh, are we the best kept secret in the whole YouTube arena? Yes. Possibly? Yes. I, I believe that's possible. Mike Hogan is watching. Yeah. So, oh my God. anyway, if you want, if you enjoy the content today, if you enjoy watching a couple of videos. Tom Fisher is watching, and I'm pretty sure he's going to say he does not enjoy the content. <laughs> he's like, hey, can you guys replace the big guy? Replace the big guy with the older guy. <laughs> yeah. We will do that next week. Bobby will be taking over for me as I'm in uh, the Bahamas. Yeah. Thomas Fisher is probably. Somewhere enjoying himself. Oh, in and and South Carolina. Though. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we do have a YouTube channel, and I sure. and I believe it's over 100 videos now uploaded oh. there. So if you, you enjoy looking at this, you can go back and watch some old yeah. ones. You can see how wrong Bill is. No, yeah, very saying, much. Uh, about a lot of things he said. No, hey, the one prediction I've wondered about is how poor the Reds this year. I really yes. haven't paid that much attention. They're terrible. And, and that oh, was so one that I said, you know, early in the year, they're better. Year. They're better than you think. It's about three weeks then. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we were wrong. Yes, we were. You're you're, you're you're right. Actually, they were. Yeah. Poor. They were. They they were better than I thought. Or yeah. better than they looked. The well, you thought weeks. that they weren't going to win more than six games. Yeah. and they have won more than six games. Yeah, but twelve games is not that much more than <laughs> six games. Yeah, they they doubled. Yeah. Um, and then so NFL news, Bill. Do you, is sure. there any, anybody did any good before we start talking about this Panini? All right, we fanatics thing. Okay, week one NFL. Not a great week with NFL. A lot of uh, close games, which was good. You know, a lot of three point games, field goal at the end of the game, stuff like that. And at least we know the Bengals won. We, yeah. What they? The Bengals did not win. They didn't win. No, they missed by a field goal. Oh, okay. Because I don't think the, I don't think Pittsburgh won either. I think they just outlasted. They just stayed there and just kept on chipping away. Honestly, it's an, uh, Pittsburgh is no team out there was great at this time. And I talked to some people. And we uh, the mass that I've talked to the mass people I talked to about it. We agree. Okay, you have a preseason. You know, you have four game preseason and stuff like that. Okay, you get all these people that come in and play, all these rookies. They're trying to make the team and stuff like that. But basically, you had Burrow come in and look like he hadn't touched the ball in nine months. You know why? Because he hasn't touched the ball in nine months. You've got to get these people in and play. they got to be, you know, you're going from zero to a thousand in one week. Week, week four in preseason, right to... You have to get these out guys in play. I granted you don't want to get injured. I understand that completely. But you know, then have them doing more stuff because, yeah. and then injuries. Uh, Dak Prescott out for at least <laughs> six or eight weeks. Um, uh, shoot, Tom Brady did get another. He added a touchdown to his. Um, career lead in the NFL, um, and they won uh, Sunday night. Uh, let me see. Um, the, the Seahawks, who are quarterbacked by Geno Smith, who I forgot was even in the league, beat Russell Wilson, who's not with the Seahawks, who is with um, oh shoot, Dallas, or uh, Denver Broncos. A lot of changing. Uh, Trubisky's going to be replaced at some point this year. I don't know who by. Uh, the Cowboys. State ticket. Well, I mean, that's the guy that's there, but, you know, uh, I'm still hoping for uh, Mason Rudolph. I'm still hoping Mason Rudolph has a chance because I got too much invested in him for him not to uh, make it. So um, did you already dump all your burrows on eBay? Did I dump my burrows? I did not. The fire <laughs> self. Actually, pretty much if Burrow has a horrible year, I'm probably going to die with him. Yeah. 
So you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You still have um, ten couches. I still have. I I will be honest with you. I wanted when Tim Couch was a rookie. And if you guys have been in this since the nineties, and you know, like our friends Bart, Tony, Fisher, and all these people, Jim Spiegel, has been in it since the eighties, early nineties. Was he okay. handsome then? Jim Jim Spiegel in the eighties and nineties. You know what? The less hair he gets. The more handsome he gets, that that like, doesn't work for normal people. Yeah, for for normal people, they lose their hair, they get more not as attractive. Yeah, Jim it's, Spiegel has the like hair length. Line. Oh, you should. He's <laughs> got some pictures that I, I remember. He had like flowing locks. Yeah, and I was like, eh, he's all right. But boom, you see him now. Look, Look. Anyways, um, Tim Couch could not buy rookie card autograph to save my life. They were a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. So Tim Couch is a bust in the league, and one night I went on eBay, and there was an eight-card lot of his autographs. It went for twenty bucks. I couldn't help it. Yeah. So I do have eight Tim Couch rookie autographs that were really good ones, and probably not going to sell. <laughs> They're going to be buried with me. Yeah. If anybody has any comments, uh, Jim Spiegel seems to be laughing because <laughs> he thinks we're wrong. Because he thinks he's more handsome now. Or, uh, he was good looking back then, too, though. So, um, if you guys want to make any comments on any of the teams or any, anything, you want my you want my expert opinionism, you're probably going to get it. It's <laughs> probably not expert. It's just opinionism. Yeah. So, okay, so NFL, anything else? Or you want to jump um, to the fanatics thing? NFL, I mean, I think as the weeks go by, the team will get stronger. You'll definitely see a definition in between the teams that are average. Because this team, this week, it seemed like the better teams were the better teams won. I mean, you could have predicted most of the games. Most of the games, they other than like I said, Seattle. Almost all the other games, I would have predicted, or it was within three points or whatever. I think the next couple weeks, you're going to see more definition in between your stronger teams that are going to actually score, uh, score more points, and make you know the the different the the break between winning and losing a lot bigger than three points. Um, like in the first half, I really thought that Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase didn't like each other because he couldn't throw the ball for nothing, yeah. you know. But then the second half, you know, Jamar's back. So yeah, he made some good catches. Oh, for sure. At the very end. Um, but okay, so so here's this is the big news, um, I guess, and, and I. Give credit where credit's due. If you like these guys or not, Sports Card Radio uh, does seem to be on top of what is mm -hmm. happening, and they see what is happening. What is happening? Yeah, it, it, isn't that a show from the seventies? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, there was at least a guy that was like, "What's happening? What's happening?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of close to what's up, like back yeah, in the nineties. Well, that, that's yeah. Our buddy Eric used to do it all the time. Like, like we'd, be at the, we'd be at the flea market. <laughs> we'd be at the flea market, and he'd be like. Yeah, like wait, you, like four years after that, yeah. then you said <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, well, you know what? It was one continual uh, for four <laughs> years straight. Yeah, and that was the thing. Like every time you saw him, it was a little longer. Yeah, it was uh, like part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Panini, um, according to Sports Card Radio, which seems to have some inside mm -hmm. track, and now everybody else that I've watched or tried to find online has just kind of cop copied them, admitted okay. that that they've seen it okay. on there. Here's the question, though. Yeah. Okay. Now. They've said a lot of stuff that's true. Yes. They've said a lot of stuff that's BS. They, they probably have. Now, do I trust these guys? <laughs> these two guys that one has a Rolex collection and sits on a golf course, and the other guy is his twin, and I don't know what he does. I'm not saying that they're purposely trying to um, push people in certain directions, yeah. but there's a thing in the world called clickbait. Yes, and absolutely. I doing would that. take everything with a grain of salt. Just yeah. in just in general, anything you see on Facebook, both Facebook, YouTube, YouTube channels, uh, GameConsportsCollect.com, uh, stuff like that. I would yeah. take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, for sure. Make up your own mind what you believe. You know, and, and, if, and if, if if it turns to be true, that's great. But you know, don't get snookered by somebody telling you something and taking you as the bottom. Yeah. So other than Jesus, 
Yeah. So Panini, uh, supposedly, uh, so this is a rumor. Supposedly, first of all, Josh Uber is out as like this leading this new. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is true. That is, that is very that is likely true. true. Um, and so he kind of. And that was the guy. Cards. And that was the guy that was going to be the card messiah. Yes. To fanatics. Yeah. Who, before he even got into the job, is out. Yes. Yeah, he's out. And so we'll just we'll, we'll say a couple things. Okay. So the the Panini purchase is, is being finalized. Is what the river is. If there's yeah. I's being dotted, T's being crossed. Now I will throw a little personal information out this. Yep. Uh, with Panini. They they rule out their player of the day thing. Uh -huh. About a week ago, I got a message from Panini that the player of the day would be delayed. So it is a little interesting yeah. that a week ago I get, oh, you know how that was supposed to ship? That's going to be two, three weeks out. We'll give you an update when we get it, get yeah. a thing. And then there's this big rumor surfacing that they're in talks, yeah. uh, and that there's a purchase going on. So what does it mean? Well, it means they bought Tops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of were questioning, would Panini uh, fall to them? Would they stand? Do they make so much money they could just, you know, avoid it? Yeah. Um, but it kind of sounds like they are going this way. So um, it would be Panini, Tops, all of their licensing. Yeah. Uh, Fanatics, I've heard this too, Fanatics literally owns the ability, the, the right the, to, per, to print cards. Yeah. Like there's certain technology, I guess, involved in the printing of, of cards. And, and Fanatics has also sealed that up too. Mm -hmm. as, and locked it in with, a, what is that yeah. called, a pack mm -hmm. or whatever. So supposedly and that they have license with all with the National Association of Colleges. Yes. Like over four hundred colleges and working relationships with Ohio State. Yes. With uh, different colleges. So. so you've got Upper Deck still standing independently, and you basically have them and Leaf. Mm -hmm. If you go b below that, you're basically talking about people that have not made an impact in the hobby uh -huh. and have very little to do with the hobby. Or repackers. Though, yeah. That are not. That's not really their own product they produce. They yeah, just like gold brush or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, it, it's looking like we're going to have a monopoly for the most part. And there's a lot of questions. We've talked about this before. Will they do their own distribution? Will they do whatever? And we had to backpedal on the initial response yeah. that Tops had pulled from GTS because yeah. we'd said, oh, yep, yeah, they they punished them, pulled everything away. They, took they the did hobby. punish him. They yeah. did punish him. They yeah. took away the money product. They took away the hobby, left them retail, and left them uh, doing like the uh, overseas, the overseas yeah. stuff. Yes, um, distributing for that. So, anyway, this you're going to be a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Is this monopoly good or bad for the consumer? For the actual card collector, is it good or bad? Uh, the consumer is going to have a very difficult time if if you are into. Okay. If you are breaking boxes to try to resell, you're going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. The market's not going to come down. The yeah. market will come down, but it's not because the companies are going to, um, they're not trying to help you. They're, they're not, these companies aren't your friend. They, yeah. they tell you they are, they say, hey, we're going to make a product for you and all this. And then like, hey, we're going to put out select football. And then, right off the bat, it's eighteen or what, twelve hundred, fourteen hundred bucks a box. Yeah. Okay. Whoever made that box to you for fourteen hundred dollars is not your friend, because the wholesale price that came out at Panini was probably about two seventy five. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, probably not even that. So yeah. I I assure you, your person that is selling you the box for fourteen hundred is not your friend. Yeah. Now, is Fanatics going to fix that? Or are they going to be like, hey, the starting price coming out is eight hundred dollars, yeah, but we're saying it's through the retail at a thousand, yeah, you know. So are they going to make these? I will say standard products, just because, for lack of better terms to say, are they going to make these standard products that everybody wants all into continuously a thousand dollar product? Yeah. Now, if you're person coming into the market now and you're wanting if you, especially kids and we're we got in this when we were younger we was able to because we could buy packs of cards at stores and stuff like that there was and cigarettes I don't, know, I don't know why anyways 
that was a long time ago. So anyway, um, you can't, you are still going to, there is more kids in the market than there ever has been in like the last 15 years. But kids are not, the kids aren't able to make any money at it, so they find themselves not interested in it as much. Or they traded all their stuff for a big card, you know. Hey, I traded all this for a $5,000 card. Well, now that $5,000 card, they had to sell it for $500 because the market changed. Yeah. You know, it, it's a lot of losses, you know. So I do not think that. I, it's almost like, uh, what is it, Billy Madison, where he talks for a while and then they're like, that made no <laughs> sense. No point. Nobody was, yeah. Nobody was listening anyways. Yeah. Um, Benefited no one. Yeah. Fanatics owning it. Fanatics <laughs> do a great job, be, especially if they have a long term contract. Say if they have a, if they own them and they have a contracts, you know, control the NFL, Major League, and um, basketball contracts for the next 20 years, they do not have to make as much money as somebody that has to make it all in five years. Yeah. So they could be nice. Yeah. And make products affordable. Well, this, yeah. So let's, I, I just want to touch on a couple things you said. When you use the example of what is select football or yes. whatever, $1,400 a box. And and Bill's saying, well, you know, probably 200 bucks, let's say. Yeah. Uh, you can get that allocated, direct, or whatever through a distributor, 200 bucks. Now, hardly anybody got that product at $200. Let, let's yeah. be clear on that. So there, there's these mom and pop shops did not get that product allocated to them, most of them. Oh, but most of them. Most, well, we know because we we didn't receive any or even an option from Peach State. Yeah. We did not receive any from Southern Hobby. That wasn't even an offer. And GTS, who you've been a loyal customer of 15 years of, yeah. kind of laughed at you. I don't know if they really laugh. I, I, I think they, I think anything. whenever you submit things to them, I think they literally laugh. They laugh. They're like, they're like, they're like oh, this guy wants to actually make dollars over the last four years. Yeah. Means nothing. This but, guy that wants to try to keep his shop going, ha ha ha. Yeah. But this breaker that wants ten cases today and needs twenty cases next week at the new inflated price. at the new inflated price yeah. as much as you want. Yeah. So it's boom. Yeah, we can just break it. Elite, yeah. Elite football. I, I got none correct. Yeah. You know? yes. So if, if you think that he's already I, at the secondary price coming in, yeah. Like if you think I got that for 120 bucks and I'm just you know, it, it's not the case. I, I have to go elsewhere. So anyway, what I was going to say is just to get to the bottom line: is the monopoly good? Monopoly is never good. It's never good for a customer. However, the whole reorganization of the distribution, the whole idea that. They, they, are they going to make money? Yep. They're probably going to do it by cutting out most of the distribution. Yep. yep. Are they going to raise suggested retail prices? Yes. Yep. But they are not going to delay, take select football from two hundred and fifty dollars to fourteen hundred. No. They are going to. You're going to see cheaper prices. You're going to see this more control in the pricing structure. And if they do work with breakers or they do work with shops, there's going to be uh, a lot less profit margin. For the shops that were getting yeah. direct, and um, you know, that still had decent yeah. allocations, and uh, it, it's interesting. It, do you think this is uh, good <coughs> for shops and breakers? One at a time. Breakers. Is this uh, good for breakers? Breakers. <coughs> it doesn't matter because the breakers aren't. The breakers are. They're not really paying the price. The breakers are whatever the price is. They pay it. They sell it. They sell their. You know. Okay, so this week, okay, instead of us busting 20 cases, we only busted 10 cases. They still busted 10 cases, made a markup of 20 or 30 percent, and moved on to the next product. They don't care. The, the breakers, if you put the product out there at a million dollars, they're still going to buy it, and they're going to find suckers. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not trying to insult people, but you're going to find people that are desperate, and they just, and they're going to try to buy that rookie team. They need because they need that card, and they, they need to flip it. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Breakers aren't going to hurt because whatever the price is, they're still going to pay it. And that's what they've done all the time. They've always paid the price, 
so broke the product, bought more of it, yeah, broke the product. Yeah. It's a broken record, yeah, one year thirty percent profit every time. They have nothing to worry about. Okay, so then the shops, first of all, let let's well, I know one shop that's in trouble. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, no. Of the shops, let's let's first of all talk about how scary it is if you own a shop. Yes. You have to be scared out of your mind. You're you actually I don't know if you're better off owning a shop and in my position now where eighty percent of your inventory is coming from the secondary and you've already made all those connections and you're already used to to hustling to do that. To make fifteen or to make fifteen yeah, now that, that's where I'm going with this. If if you're better off if you were that guy or if you or if you're better off if you had like a allocation and you used to just call up somebody and be like, Give me three cases and then they yeah. sent you three cases and you made eighty percent profit. See, two, two, three years ago, three, year, two years ago, I was making 80% profit. And then we, most of the people doing this was making 70, 80% profit. So it's a numbers game, right? Like, I only had to do $3,000 a week, and I'm paying myself pretty okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay? So just. And buying a house in uh, South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> not, not that well. Not that well. But, but, I, was, but I was doing well. And so it's, it's a numbers game, and now. Even if they continue, there's not one, let me say this first, there's not one shop right now in the United States of America that knows how they're getting top series in 2023. Yeah. Not one shop is, is assured that they're getting that. So something's got to change. Something's going to give. And, and so you have to be scared. It doesn't matter if you did. Uh, unless you're direct with Tops already. Yeah, unless you're direct with Tops already. And still, what, what's going to change with that? For sure. You know, at least you've, you've stopped making good money. And that's what I, I want to talk about next. But so let's say, you know, I'm very open and honest and stuff. And I've told multiple people this. I basically have to, I have to grow sales eight grand a week. Eight grand a week gross sales to pay myself. Are you all start doing that? Yeah, well, I do that pretty regularly. Okay. So eight grand a week is what I have to do in gross sales if my profit margin is about 20% or less. So I have to do that. So that's, you know, that obviously that's not just from the shop, but that's from multiple things that I do. But that number is not a little tiny number. Wait. It, are we supposed to make money doing this? Yes, we are. No. I think so. My Holy wife would appreciate it. Holy did. crap, I've been doing this for 30 <laughs> years and not made money. Yeah. What yeah. was I thinking? Yeah, so, I mean, that number... If you can pay yourself? <laughs> yes, I, I have done that for a oh while. Oh my god. But, yeah, it is weird, isn't it? I'm but quitting I the business. I didn't for a long time. I'm quitting the I business. Did, I didn't for a long time. I'm wearing a But anyway, you know, that <laughs> number keeps <laughs> having to go up. So, um, I'm sure this involvement, this this allocation thing being straightened out puts every one of us back to that 25, 20, 30 and on a good day percent profit on merchandise. So I would be concerned, but you know who I'd really be concerned for if I was a shop and my name was something like eight great guys cards? Yeah. I would be crying yeah. because there is no way that you can have 10 employees or four of you be yeah. in it equally or 17 of you be in it yeah. equally mm -hmm. and you'd be like, I can move mm -hmm. that many. I mean, what are, what are we talking about? You know, if it's 10 guys or, yeah. or you know, let's even say five guys, you're going to move $40,000 a week worth of product. Oh, you mean like the hamburger guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They went and the, they, the five guys you're talking about, they started selling hamburgers. Did you know that? They did. Mm -hmm. Yes. They got good, good fries. They're fresh. Yeah. They like to have the potatoes. Stacked. They're expensive. They are a little expensive. Well, you know why? It's to pay all five of those guys. That's true. You know, I could go to McDonald's. So and, keep it I could go to McDonald's to get a fry and a hamburger for three dollars. Instead, I pay fifteen dollars there. Yeah. Because there's five guys to pay. Yeah. That's what it is. So, long story short, uh, if you're a shop or whatever, profit margins are going to shrink if we can keep shops. Mm -hmm. If they even decide to work with us, so then you need to be thinking about how much do I have to turn. What ways yep. am I going to turn that? Yeah. Am I going to try whatnot, which we do, which yeah. is uh, what GT Sports Very, Collect. very successful. GT Sports Collect, yeah. Yes. And so we do that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, going to add yeah. another day, maybe a Wednesday, a little bit uh, yep. toward the evening. But anyway, it's just going to, it, it's moving more and more and more. And, and guess what? The good news is, is that we know to somebody that set up their business as an LLC card shop with five employees. When you do that and you see there's five employees, LLC, card shop, when they see the profit margin is down to 25%, they're stepping out. 
Yeah. They're getting real jobs. They have families to support. Yeah. It's actually those of us that's expectations are so low. It's so low. That, you know, that, that's how you make it in life. That's how you're a success. You just set your expectations so yeah. low. Oh, no, yeah, 100%. Don't, don't, don't look. Yeah. But yeah. We, we shoot to be below the bar all the time. Yeah, that's perfect. And we normally hit it. Yeah. Very, <laughs> and we get mad if we do. If we go over the bar, we're like, holy crap, we got to pay taxes on that to the government. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. But no, it's for the mom and pop shop. This is the thing. Now, Josh Luber, I'm not trying to pour on him. And I, you know, he did a very good, he wrote a very good 14 page essay about how they need to bring cards back. When I was a kid, I bought yeah. cards at the store and all this and stuff like that. Well, that is a great theory. Love the theory. It's not. It's not possible, and they they want ten times as many card shops. Well, they want ten times as many card shops so they can sell ten times more of their product. But if you don't have the customer that's willing to come in and buy top series one, yeah, which we don't even know what the price is going to be now. They may come in and be like, hey, top series one hobby, well, we're going to start at two hundred dollars. There's going to be a lot of rookies in it. Uh, it's going to be $200 retail. Your wholesale price is going to be 140 Rob ain't got no choice but to buy it because he's got customers who want it. Now, when that customer comes in and sees that that product that's $100 normally jumps to $200, mm -hmm. he's less interested in tops this year. Yeah. And that's what's happened year after year after year. Where will Fanatics draw the line? I don't know. I don't know. And it depends on how quick they feel like they need to get their money back. If they, if they have to go back to investors to pay Panini to buy their license. And a major thing that we looked at with them is like, oh, man, you know, hey, well, you know, they're not going to be able to do football next year. So uh, Fanatics is going to bring back Topps Chrome football. Great. Topps Chrome, great. But then if they own Panini, they could put out Panini Prism. Yeah. It's the same God's Star product. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's all chrome. There's going to be a and it's not it's not product. just going to be just a chrome refractor. It's going to be your tops chrome refractor, a snake skin elephant of <laughs> Warmer's tree yeah. or something. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, too many products. Everybody's trying to make everybody's trying to pay the bills doing it. If I wish they would cut it back to, I w I say that I wish they would cut it back. Now that's just us in a small market. Columbus is not a bad market. No. But compared to Chicago and what stuff if, like that, we are a small market. But what if the five shops uh -huh. that are within a hour hour of downtown Columbus? Yeah. What if they all needed to triple their sales of sports cards? At the price that's currently on them, no. They can't. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. No. Because for a fact, I know one shop in Columbus. And the guy's one of my best friends, just like Rob is and Bobby. Um, there's no way that he could sell triple the product he has unless the product was greatly discounted compared yes. to what it is now. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen him buy boxes at $1,200 and sell for $1,200 and eat the credit card fee. Because it's the allocation. Because of allocations. And Thinking stuff like next that. year they get some couple more boxes. Yes. Yeah. And because, That's what we were told because to he did it with tops, yeah. that got him nothing. Yeah, you know, so that that was a bad bet. Well, now, but it was the only bet at that true. time. Yeah, so it was the only bet. I now think. I don't know. It, it's going to be a strange market. Yeah. And, mean, and obviously, diver diversification yeah. is. Um, you know, we can talk all these business things, the 80-20 principle and all, and all this stuff, and, and yeah. you know, uh, diversification, multiple streams of income, all those sort of things. But the reality is, is that Bill and Bobby would love that the average dollar that came in here got spent towards singles. And you can say what you want. You can tell the person you're not going to get a good value in this. You can literally tell the person this is gambling. Mm -hmm. You can tell them, you know, why don't you just buy the cards you want and guess what's going to sell? This. They're still going to buy wax. They're still going to buy wax. So we can diversify all we want, but this is the elephant in the room that has to be dealt with to draw people into your shop. No, it does. 100%. And, and, and oh, if, if we don't have wax in here, yeah. we get 
We very few. We have yeah. very few people that come in from out of town unless they're like, "Hey, I want to check out that place," or "Hey," or or it's always those shops that don't have the wax that, "Oh, we're gonna have it coming. We're gonna start getting the wax." It's like, okay, when are you gonna start getting the wax? Well, what they mean is they intend to get wax, but they don't want to pay the price for wax to sell you wax. Yeah. So it is what it is, you know. We have a very good relationship with Rob here, and Rob allows us to sell our wax, his wax, our wax. <laughs> we sell our wax. Adam, Adam Musselman just joined. Hey, hey, Steve, thanks for joining us too. Uh, if it wasn't for Rob selling his wax in here, me and Bobby would have a hard time having a shop this size with not being able to make we would make a hundred percent of the money that's coming in but a hundred percent of zero is still zero yeah. where five percent of a number is still enough to pay for a good bit of our rent so yeah even if that number is ten thousand a month yes five hundred dollars pays yeah. for most of our rent and me and bobby can keep on doing this and we give Rob a bunch of crap for that because we don't make any money, but that, that's, that's been our choice. We prefer to do singles. We make our money on the long game. We don't make it on the short game. We we buy something, like today I bought something, you know, I bought a Ben DiNucci autograph off a guy for a couple bucks and sold it for a lot more because he could be Dallas' quarterback. So it's a situation where, you know, Rob exchanges his future potential for the boxes to turn it now to make the 10 to 20 percent and we are going to buy it we're going to spend more more money and we're going to have it held longer but hopefully we get paid benefit our benefit is that we held on to long enough With a that it took off yeah and one guy that like right now in particular i believe that he is what's the one judge guy <laughs> Uh, he's, Aaron I think judge. He's a, oh, is that him? Yeah, yeah he's in New York. Yeah. I have tons of Aaron Judge. Yeah. Don't have one card. I got one card out in the showcase. Of the whole <laughs> showcase. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Judge cards. Yeah. I have no money. Don't care if I sell. I think that he's underrated still. Just because of the way the market is. Um, you know, that will I die with Aaron Judge? Probably. If he leaves the Yankees. I'm more apt after this season to sell them because I'm a Yankees fan. So, and that's where us being collectors and being fans hurts us. Where Rob, if it's a blaster, a mega, an optic, a select, a prism, it doesn't matter. It's just a product to sell. Yeah. So, Rob is better off in his plan of making money. We, at some point, our plan would be good if, it, if we actually made money. Well, so, anyway, we should get off here, but all right, guys. before we do, uh, Game Time Sports Collect, it'll give you all the information about, there's a section for Southway American Legion show, there's our, our little schedule of events, you'll see our whatnot information mm -hmm. on there, um, so we've been doing whatnots on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. want to add, maybe an early evening. Yeah, why don't uh, we do a, I will not be here currently, just if anybody happens to watch this, I will not be in the shop, uh, exactly. leaving Friday, and I won't be back until the following a week from the Tuesday, so yeah. um, if you have any stuff you want to sell me at good prices, hold off. <laughs> but if um, when I get back, we're really going to stress trying to get more shows on uh, more shows uploaded to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, Bart and Tony's not going to be at the show. They're going to be on Flow Flow Rider. They're oh, going wow. to Flow Rider. So, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So when we get back, I will say this on my behalf um, and, and Bobby's behalf also. We do appreciate what Rob does here, and he has established a good brand. Now, he's not card collector, too, <laughs> but he is working to be on all the social media sites. We have a web page. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on whatnot. We um, are... Ability to find us is pretty easy in this area. So if you want to check out a shop that has just some decent guys that's trying to try just to make a living, that's great. Uh, if you don't, uh, come by on our traders night. We'll give you free pizza and pop, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we will soon the bridge that is next 
and south of us from town will be opened up after this weekend. So that will at least alleviate some of the pressures of coming to our shop. And I believe October 15th, the other bridge will be opening up for at least until spring 2023. So any of you people that are on your way back from Columbus, I know there's a certain cop that uh, is a customer of ours that comes through here, but you know, it's just out of his way, but that would make it in his way to come through here. And then Steve from uh, Chillicothe and stuff like that. So, uh, all right guys, hey, I'll stop rumbling. So, hey, thanks for watching. Oh, did you mention the products you have out here and prices? Uh, I did. So we have Elite Football. Elite uh, Football. We actually have more coming in tomorrow. Whoa. Um, right at market at 300. We have Legacy. Uh, got that back in. It's 180. Okay. The museum Collection is 400. That's right at market. And then Best of Sports, which actually uh, one of the guys watching right now was uh, talking to the man who makes Elite, uh, the, the man who owns the company, and he was talking about the good cards that that he uh, claimed that he put in there. So best of sports is just a, like a buyback product from Lee. And yep. it's 275. And we are currently sitting in front of mostly Bengals cards. And we have a Burrow bobblehead. We have a Burrow showcase with rookies and stuff like that. If Burrow happens to have a real bad year, there will be a very discounted case. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, but, um, hey, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, check out Rob's show Saturday from 10 to 2, 10 to 3, if whatever. Um, and uh, we'll be here to shop 12 to 6, Tuesday through Saturday. And check us out on, uh, you can check out me on Yahoo 23 on eBay. Uh, and you can check out the shop online at yahoo.com. Or, <laughs> Yeah, GameTime Sports Game Collect. Sports Collect.com. Also, Caesars Creek Booth. Caesars Creek Booth also. Into Funkos, yes. Some wrestling stuff. Uh, Nick down there has. And something. check us out tomorrow if you can. We'll be live at 3 30 here on Whatnot. And it's GT, GT Sports, Sports Collect. So, all right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us. And we will talk to you next week. Have a great day. Bye.